So I will try now to quickly recap what we need to set up our environment. In our workshop notes, the first paragraph is preparing our workbench. And this points to a dedicated page to install and use Miniconda. We will use Miniconda in quite an advanced way because Chime 2 does it. So you will find some information here and also the instructions to install uh, Miniconda on your computer and the commands that you can either copy and paste or uh, you can just uh, go to the official website and note that there are installers for every operating system and platform that you need. So we are using a Linux server and we will use Python 3.9, the last version, Linux 64-bit. We can copy the link to the clipboard and then go back to the terminal. So let's uh, log in into our remote server with SSH username at the remote server address that can be either a URL, let's say a domain or an IP address. In our case, we have a nice workshop. We can pay, paste the password or type the password and we are in. Okay. And with wget, we can paste the link. I suggest you always to put your double quotes surrounding URLs because you don't know when you copy an URL if it contains some special characters that can go, uh, that can drive uh, wget mad. So we download the correct package and now it's just a matter of bash Miniconda. So uh, the first question is, please review the license. Press enter to continue. So I hit enter and then page down until I reach the end. And when I'm done, I can accept with yes. Here I'm proposed to install it in my home directory. That is what I want to do. The setup will work and download and unpack data. This is the important part. Do we want to initialize our installation? Yes, we do. Now, Conda is installed, but not yet active. So in order to, in order for the change to take effect, we can either log out and log in again, or source tilde slash, that is in our home, there is a file called bash rc and we can source it and if you see now we have base that is the the current uh, uh, conda environment highlighted in our prompt we can test it uh, by installing a package and we can install mamba as a first package because it's a faster replacement for conda itself so conda install then minus c conda forge this is the channel where Mamba is and then Mamba. If we do like this, we will be asked to confirm if we add minus y in the command, this will force the installation basically. As I said, we have this prompt, so hit enter to confirm that we are happy. Now we can use Mamba to install a couple of packages like SecFu and QAX. When we need to use multiple channels, minus C the first channel and then minus C again the second channel. Again, we are asked to confirm. And this time we installed two packages with Mamba. If we type SecFu, we should have the first splash screen working. Since Conda Forge is, uh, is often required by the dependencies of the packages that we want to install, we can create a um, Conda RC configuration file. So we can type nano tilde slash to specify that we want to save it in our home, even if it was already my home, and then dot Conda RC. The dot at the beginning of a file means that it's a hidden file, and usually configuration files are like dot program name RC. So we hit enter, and in the notes uh, in the website, you will see that there is a, an example, 
configuration that is the default channels to use when to look for packages. You can you, you should put defaults as the first and then maybe Conda Forge. Uh, sometimes by Conda can also save time, but of course the more channels you have here, the the longer it will take to, to look for packages. So it's up to you. Uh, I can be happy with uh, defaults and Conda Forge alone. Remember that these are spaces and not tabs. When I'm done, I can control X to exit. I will prompt it if I want to save the buffer. I can type Y for yes and then hit enter to confirm the file name. Now, if I need again a package from Conda Forge, I can just uh, avoid typing minus C Conda Forge again. 